Hi, I'm Brian Elliott. Welcome to another edition of Behind the Brand. I'm here live at CES in the Panasonic Creator Studio talking to Jamie Simonoff, founder and inventor at Ring. Jamie, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Brian. Jamie, how'd you get this job? <laughs> so I actually was working in my garage and I couldn't hear the doorbell. And so I started building a Wi-Fi doorbell, being kind of a geeky guy. You're an and inventor. I'm an inventor. Okay. And uh, that became, that wasn't supposed to be my product. I was working on other products. And that became the product that everyone would talk about when they came and visited me. And so that literally became the product. And that was about five years ago now. And now we're, we're here today. So it wasn't successful right out of the box, right? Oh, no. Yeah, tell me that story. Um, I mean, this has been a this, this has been a uh, overnight success, like you know, five years in the making. So the first four years were brutal. Uh, we ran out of money multiple times. So uh, was it self-funded at first? It was uh, it was self-funded. Then we did a pre-sale. We raised some money. I mean, we like hook and hook by hook and by crook. You know, we 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 really did everything we could to make it and it was it was a mixture of things like it was never one thing got us there okay. um, and our first product was not a it was a I'd say a first version of a product it was it was it was tough yeah. what was the tipping point um, you know the tipping point I think was everything all the work of like four years of laying foundation coming together so it was it was it wasn't it wasn't like a tipping point of like we got this one deal with Best Buy and that made it we did get a deal with Best Buy but that was because we had great customer service that we had built up and we had built up a great um, distribution and we had built up a great product and, and great reviews and so it really wasn't like I, and I think if you really look at a lot of companies it looks like there's something that happened that just made it blow up but the reality is it, it, it's so many little things like even on the team there's not one person that really made it. It's not me, it's not the head sales guy, it's not the head of technology. It's really everyone together and without any of them it would actually not work. I think that's an important message I want to underscore. You know, a lot of people watch this show, they're creators or they're entrepreneurs, they're trying to do their thing and it sounds like the message that I hear time and again, it's it's kind of a last man standing contest. Uh, I, for sure. I mean, it, it's and it's there's just constantly these walls that come up in front and you, you have to like run through them and smash through them and each one feels like it's going to kill you and Sometimes they do. Who said no to you? Every, I mean, who, who said yes? I mean, let's go through the other list because it's smaller. I mean, um, everyone said no. We went on Shark Tank, we couldn't raise money. Um, you know, every manufacturer said no to us. Every engineering firm said no to us. Every, everyone said no to us in the initially. And then, you know, it's actually nice. This is now our fourth CES with the product. I'm now seeing people that like our, our camera chip manufacturer, who was the, the, the salesperson from that, was really bet on us when we were in the garage. And I just saw him and now we're one of the largest companies now in the space. And you know, he's it's like so great to like thank someone for that. But like yeah. people have to take bets on you and it's and it's just so and it, to get to that one person to take a bet on you, you go through ten people that say no and you just you just have to keep going. I mean What was the criteria of people believing in you? Was it personal or was it all about the product or I think we had a strong vision to reduce crime in communities. And so we weren't just saying like I want to build a product, I want to get rich, I want to do this like I was like I want to build I want to change communities. It was purpose driven. driven. Purpose driven, mission driven. I always said it's a 10 year plan. And when I could get in front of someone and tell them that and they could see in my heart that like the emotion of it, yeah. like you mean it. You mean it. And I think that was what separated us out from other people are like, oh, I want to, you know, I want to have a doorbell on the front door. That's that's Wi-Fi. Like that's a, it's just that the, the two messages are the same in terms of the end result, but very different from that side. So you get people to really buy into, and we have we've been very fortunate to then get people to buy into the mission, and that that's more, you know, and I'd say to any entrepreneur, having a strong mission is what can get the team around you. It can it, it, it's really what unites and allows you to go forward because it is very hard, and that that sort of. To me, that's the that's the train that really like is the powerful part of the business. What mistakes have you made along the way? Uh, you know, every mistake. I mean, well, but, no, I, yeah. I mean, uh, I guess I want to. You know, I hear a lot of people say, you know, failure is not an option, but really, yeah. failure is an option. It has to be because you can't have success without it. Um, yeah. And so, it's important to you know obviously learn from your mistakes, but like. Sometimes people get paralyzed in that, oh, I want to have a perfect product first, or I want to be the perfect CEO or the founder, or, you know, they kind of get stuck. So our first product, I mean, it, it worked, but it was a, it, it didn't, I'd say a lot of customers it didn't work for very well. Like it was a, it was a, you know, it was an early version of a product. And, and I think 
some of our investors, some of our employees, some of our team members, I think they wanted us to stop even at that because it was so hard and we were getting, you know, it's like tough when customers call you up and say it's like a terrible piece of crap. Like, <laughs> and you either learn from that and yeah. you go forward and you say, we're gonna do this and then we're gonna take care of that customer and we're gonna like, or you die. And I, th I, think, you're, I, think, I think being able to make mistakes, to accept the fact that you're going to make constant mistakes, like we still do. But I think the big thing about mistakes and how you do it is, Again, if you have that mission, and that's what's driving where you're going. So we have a 10-year plan always in the company. We're always 10 years out. And so if you have a 10-year plan and you're making mistakes, but at least you have that plan. Because the other thing that happens with companies is they start doing this. They, they are turning and turning and turning, and they're never getting anywhere. So Too they, many pivots. Or, too many pivots because they're trying to like make up for all these things. And like you got to say, like, well, they're, or they're listening to their investors who think that they know what they're doing, but really the... The person has the vision has got the... Absolutely, and you kind of have to say to the team, here's what we're going to do. If it's a mistake, it's a mistake, but we're going to go fully into that mistake. We're not going to hedge the mistake, we're, we're going to go for it. And, and again, sometimes it is a mistake, but I'd rather execute well on a mistake than not execute sort of at all, or execute on a lot of little things not that well. So aside from product stuff, because you're iterating obviously over five years, yep. what other mistakes, maybe that other people, and other, whether they're in another industry or they're creating content, I mean, what, what advice can you give to them or what have you done that you learn from? You know, I think, I think the, the common thing would be, again, I think having a mission is what can drive through and above everything. It can kind of, so whether, whatever you're doing, I don't care if you're selling trash cans or you're, like, have that mission that drives you through. I think on the... Well, you're the founder, so, so how do you communicate that? to now what you have about 100 people or so. 250. 250 people, that even worse. So how do you share that vision? So now we actually have, I, I used to obviously talk to every team member and, and be there. Now we have multiple offices and things. So I actually do a video okay. of me pitching a, a, a team member and then I pl and then that's played for every team member that comes in. Okay, that's well, our, But our first thing, we always tell every every team member that comes in, if you don't believe in our mission, here's our mission. And if you don't believe in it. Oh, you're pitching them to work for you. No, even like before, after, whatever. But like we, the mission is in everything we do. So when you're interviewing someone, you say, here's our mission. And if you don't like that mission, don't work with us. Yeah, if you're not on the same page. And, so, and again, I think that, that, that that's what unites the whole company. And okay, that's what makes sense. a 250 person company have one goal. Okay. Um, and, and I think that's, I, I think it is one of the biggest parts of our success is being able to do that. Because as we've scaled, you can ask anyone in the company from any level, anywhere, they, they, they are on the mission and they know what they're doing to help that mission. And I think that's, I think it's critical. How are you empowering people then to take it beyond where you guys have started? Like, how are you innovating? Um, I think you innovate, I think you gotta innovate carefully in businesses. I think innovation can be, uh, I think we're, like I, I said, we're not, a, like people say, are, you're a tech company, you're an IOT company, you're always putting like a, some sort of name, brand, whatever. I say, no, we're a reducing crime in communities company. And they laugh and they say, no, but you're really, and I said, no, like, that's what we are. Like, I, I'm dead serious. Like, trying to stay in and, your lane. And we try to stay in our lane. I think you can, like, especially like a show like this, yeah. you walk by a booth and you're like, oh my God, look at those guys have face recognition with dog recognition, like, oh, what? But that's not what sells to a customer. Customers buy a story. They buy something that solves their problem. And I think you can so easily get on this, this you see Apple coming out with products. And as you get bigger, obviously you have to do this, but when you're small, you know, the next product's not gonna save your business. You don't have to have the best features. Now, it doesn't mean we don't try to build the best product, it doesn't mean we don't try to have the best features, but just stuffing a lot of features into a product and being on a roadmap of features, that's not our business, and it's not what actually makes the consumer excited about being part of your, your brand story. I think that's really well said. Um, let's switch gears a little bit to engagement. So, how are you getting the word out about being, um, where are you seeing success, and, and sure. how are people, involved in the brand. And again, this kind of goes back to the like, how did we get successful or how did we get here? And it's it's a lot of a little. It's not one thing. It's yeah. doing stuff like this. It's going to shows like this and talking to people. It's we're in 9,500 stores now, retail. It's marketing. It's marketing a message and it goes back again to the mission, which I, I kind of, it's like, I almost sound like I'm being lazy to just give you the same answer. 
But I'm like, the yeah, same yeah, answer yeah. actually does, like, if you market the mission, if the mission's what you have and you market that down, that creates a strong customer bond yeah. that then creates an emotional connection that then creates viral, uh, it creates network effects in neighborhoods, yeah. it makes your marketing more efficient. So well, let's get specific yeah. about platforms because, uh, again, the people who are watching this are also people like you, founders, or they've got yep. something new and they want to know what's working, what's not. So like, how are you guys reacting to other social platforms to get your word out? Are you using Facebook, for example? Are you using Snapchat? Um, are you on Instagram? Are you sharing the content? Is it being shared? Uh, without your knowledge, like what are you doing in that? So right. I use everything, and I do everything, and I I, I, I try to be everywhere. So you have to be there and but what's really working? Where are you getting traction? You know, it's like crazy, but there's not. It's not one okay. thing. It's it's it's. If I look, it's like it's a hundred things that we're doing, so and each one is then. like okay. you know. It's it's. Uh, I forget. There's like you know all sorts of metaphors for it, but it's like you know. It, but it's like literally like it's an inch by inch kind of thing. It's yeah. like and. Facebook, yeah, it works for us, but it only works. It only works to a certain point. Instagram works for us only to a certain point. Yeah. When you start, and what also happens, which is interesting, you start to put all these little pieces together. They start to bond together, and now when, you, when someone sees you on Facebook and Instagram, and here's a radio advertisement, that's more powerful than like just one place. So, I think multi-channel and doing it. And I think yeah. for my, my, I don't ever um, give advice to entrepreneurs. So I think advice is a terrible thing. No one knows what they're doing. If they did, every like, you know. Well, yeah, it's like me saying, hey, well, these work for me. You should try these. Yeah, no, it's like, and I'm like, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So yeah, I think advice is a terrible thing. What I only thing I can do is lead by example or give them examples of what I'm doing that's working. I think a lot of entrepreneurs want that that deal. They want that like instant gratification that something's gonna actually just change their life, and now all of a sudden, like, Silver voila, bread. like. Yeah. And I say it's it's not. It's a million little things, and then all of a sudden you wake up one morning, like I did at CES now, and I'm like, wow, we're really actually big. Yeah, it's like, putting in the time, like, putting in the work, but it's but it's it tiny out. little cuts. It's not at least. And again, this is just because maybe someone gets that one deal and they do. But in yeah. my experience has been, it's just it's just a constant slog and work and slog and work and a lot of luck. It's a good message. It really is a good message. Um, Final thoughts. Um, I, I guess I want to know like who your customer is. I want to know how you're finding them. Yep. And, and, you know, to say everyone's our customer is a terrible answer. You obviously have a very purpose-driven. So let me give you like the. So I this I have like a 15-second pitch of the company yes. that then goes into customer. So. Our mission is to reduce crime in communities. We do that by delivering an emotional connection that we call always home. We do that We do that from a product side by doing three rings of security. The ring of security around your front door, which is our doorbell. The ring of security around your home, which is other cameras now that we've launched. The ring of security around your community. So now, that's the business, that's it. That's 10, 20, 30 years from now, that's what we'll be doing. Now from a customer side, that means who is that? That's someone who has a front door to a public area, and that's it. So anyone that has a front door to a public area, that is our customer. So that means that people who have apartments are not our customer. So we, we do know who our customer is. It's a large age range. It's actually different demos, but that's our customer. What's one of the most surprising things you discovered about your audience or maybe what they want or what they need? I think that we didn't think, we had this mission about reducing our communities and how this product could do it. We didn't know if the consumer would actually understand that. And I don't mean that the consumer's dumb, that kind of stuff. I just mean like, would they understand what we're trying to say with that? And I think not only do they understand it, they like, they like fully get it. Like, with their, you know, they, and so I think that has been the the adoption rate of that message. I think that's probably surprises how well it's been taken because it is a now it kind of looks simple, but like when you're a small company trying to give a big message. Whether the consumer's going to get that or not, I think a lot of times they don't. And a lot of times, I think that's actually hard when you are a mission-driven company. You know, I think you have to be careful not to have that mission overdrive you in terms of from the marketing because a lot of times the consumer just doesn't understand what the hell you're talking about for until you show them five years down the road. Good stuff. We've been spending a little time with Jamie Simonoff, uh, chief inventor and founder at Ring. Thanks for coming by. Thanks a lot, Brian. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it.